One of the reasons I started this video series, which I'm now calling Lakeside Lab, is to study one of my favorite soundtracks and learn from my favorite composer on how to tell better stories. But how do you tell a story in instrumental music? After all, it doesn't have the luxury of communicating explicit ideas through lyrics. An effective way to tell a story in instrumental music is with varying degrees of tension and release. The way Koji Kondo supports the narrative of the Deku Tree with music, only eight bars at that, is astounding. Yo! Deku Tree is the aptly titled piece that plays whenever the Deku Tree is speaking, namely when he's instructing Navi to awaken Link, and when he's narrating the plight of Hyrule to the player upon their first interaction in the game. Here's how I see the interest curve of tension and release telling the story of the Deku Tree. The eight bar looping piece is divided into three sections or acts. The first act deals with introducing the Deku Tree. The second act is the longest and contains the greatest deal of tension. It's the climax of the piece and conveys the dread and subsequent sadness of the evil coming against Hyrule and how Ganondorf has cursed the Deku Tree. The final act conveys the somber reality that the Deku Tree is going to die but that Link is rising to meet the challenge of defeating the evil that threatens Hyrule. Let's take a listen to the first two bars here. This piece opens with a bold D flat major seven sharp 11 over C tonality, which quickly resolves down to our tonic C major seven in the next bar, as Kondo-san teaches us a great way to build tension, namely building a chord off of the flat two scale degree over a tonic bass note. Another thing that's important to note is the presence of parallel fourths all throughout this piece. Fourths moving in parallel motion are a staple of Koji Kondo's compositions whenever he wants to convey dread or foreboding. Listen to the melody line without these parallel fourths. And now, with. Since this is the first act, I see this subtle tension and release as the awe and holy reverence, if you will, link in the player experience standing before the great Deku tree. He is, after all, this giant, ancient guardian of the forest. Just a little bit of tension and a quick resolution is enough to get that point across. The next four bars, what I'm calling the second act, contain an ominous half-step lift in the bass that just screams Phrygian mode. We feel a subtle lift in energy as the motif from the first two bars is played over the quote-unquote correct bass note. Instead of resolving down, as in bar two to our tonic of C, the piece creates even more tension by emphasizing a big, fat, D-flat diminished chord. I believe this section is the climax. This dissonant chord represents the evil coming against Hyrule and the dread of the curse that Ganondorf has placed on the Deku Tree. Finally, the latter half of the act resolves this tension, but not in the way we'd expect. The C sus 4 flat 9 walk down to the C major 7 is more like a wilted balloon slowly deflating. I think this slow resolution, which to my ears feels very grievous or sad, represents the reality that this sacred guardian of the forest is cursed to die. The D flat six to C seven flat nine resolution has the one and the five descending a half step to take us back to the tonic chord. But the absence of a major or a minor third plus the flat nine ensures that while the form has reached its completion, there is no true resolution, at least not until Link defeats Ganondorf and saves Hyrule. At any rate, I love the symmetry of this two-measure, four-measure, two-measure form. It feels almost like the equivalent to a musical haiku. Now here's where things get really interesting. I mentioned earlier that this last bar represents both the death of the Deku Tree and the rising up of Link to meet the challenge that the ancient guardian has presented him with. I base this assumption on a few different things. 
Firstly, the Deku tree says that this is what needs to be done. The tree is doomed to die, but Link must rise to face the evil assailing Hyrule. It only makes sense that the music would follow this narrative. Secondly, this idea of a guide or mentor passing the torch to a hero is nothing new, and it's a crucial part of the hero's journey narrative pattern. Obi-Wan hands Luke a lightsaber and charges him with defeating the Empire, only to be slain shortly thereafter by the weapon's previous owner. Mufasa dies at the hands of his brother and then instructs Simba to redeem Pride Rock through a vision. Uncle Ben's wisdom and ultimate death is the formative event that made Peter Parker the Spider-Man we all know and love. Thirdly, and perhaps most curiously, kondo -san sends a lower voice upward, and the upper voice that's held our melody up to this point goes downward. As the two intersect, the upper voice dips beneath the lower voice, slowing down to quarter and whole notes. The lower voice, on the other hand, rapidly climbs upward in a series of eighth notes as it crosses through the upper voice. Now, crossing voices is specifically forbidden in traditional tonal harmony practice, but so are parallel fifths and a bunch of other things that I'm sure Koji Kondo breaks all the time. We know Kondo-san is a perfectionist. He reportedly scrapped several tunes before settling on the Super Mario Bros. overworld theme, and he stated in multiple interviews that he's very particular about what music he chooses to include in games. Everything he does is backed by intention. So why do this? Why cross the voices? Maybe it's to add a classical flair, but I'm hard pressed to consider it a coincidence. Maybe, just maybe, it's not such a stretch to believe that this correlation to the story is very intentional. The crossing of the voices represents the sun setting on the Deku tree and rising upon Link. Yet the piece still ends on an unsettling chord, as if to say, Will Link actually rise up to defeat Ganondorf, or will he give up at the Water Temple? What do you think? Leave your thoughts and interpretations of this piece in the comments below, and let's start a conversation. What you're hearing is the piece I composed in the style of the Deku Tree. I use the parallel fourth thing as well as, for the most part, keeping it in the Phrygian mode. Feel free to download this piece via the link in the description if you'd like. And if you like this video, please subscribe for more content like this, and gently, so as to protect the integrity of your device, graze that like button with your thumb. No smashing necessary. Thanks for watching.